DJI just announced their newest lightweight drone to the world, the Mini 3. This drone improves on a lot of the issues that the Mini 2 had and looks like it's going to be a great tool for photographers and videographers. However, as great as this drone looks like it's going to be, it has one major problem that I'm not sure if DJI is ever going to fix. Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here. Welcome back to another video. Before I get into the big issue of what the Mini 3 has, let's take a deeper dive into what this drone is and what it's really built for before we highlight what this big issue really is. With the Mini 3's new and improved camera that can now go vertical, which is amazing for all those vertical shooters, this is a great leap forward in camera technology compared to what we had with Mini 2. With now a slightly larger sensor, dual native ISO, and an aperture of 1.7 compared to the 2.8 of the Mini 2, this is now a great option for low light capture. Not to mention, now you have a 40 megapixel sensor compared to the 12 megapixel sensor of the Mini 2. Aerial photographers will now have a very powerful camera in the sky that you can basically fly almost anywhere. To add on to the list of improvements with this drone, it now has collision avoidance sensors to allow you to fly with confidence. I have been there when I've lost quite a few Mini 2s due to not having collision avoidance sensors and flying into trees that I quite frankly just didn't see. Thank God that the drone was pretty cheap so I could replace it compared to this expensive guy that I have behind me. And to be fair, DJI's collision avoidance sensors aren't as baller as Skydio's AI sense and avoid systems that they have, but you do have to remember that this is the Mini 3. This is a 249 gram drone compared to Skydio's Mavic size drones. Now, I'm sure you've probably seen plenty of channels here on YouTube claim that this is the drone to buy as a beginner. And now I may agree with them to an extent, but if you wanna get into the world of being a professional drone pilot, outside of capturing photos and videos for social media, I would highly advise buying this drone or even considering this drone to be an option. Considering how small this drone is, while convenient for basically anybody that's carrying equipment around with them, that's not the issue here at all. This tiny drone packs a punch compared to the Mavic 3 and the Inspire 2 drones of the world. But again, size is not the issue here. It all comes down to the software. This is what's going to hold this drone back from allowing beginners to explore the world of third-party applications. The biggest reason why this is going to be a major problem for the Mini 3 is, well, it's been almost six months since DJI announced the Mavic 3 drone, and there still has yet to be an SDK for that drone. I even have this drone and I'm only limited to the base DJI Fly app that comes with the drone. Granted, I spent five grand on mine for the Cine version because I do a lot of filming and photography outside of my normal day-to-day -day work, so you know I wanted to have the quality of having ProRes and having just a great all around drone to have with me. And for five grand, I am still limited in the applications. I literally only have one application that I can use. And with DJI not releasing an SDK, it's not like I can go and buy the regular remote controller and use my iPhone and a third party app to fly the drone because simply that's just not the case. I cannot use that Mavic 3 with anything else. This is the same case for the Mini 3. There still has yet to be an announcement of when the SDK is going to be available for the Mini 3, which all of this to say, SDK is very important. There's a reason why the Mavic 2 and the Phantom 4 Pro and the Inspire drones of the world are still being used to this day, even though some of them are end of life, where it is very hard to go and buy a mint condition Mavic 2 or Phantom 4 Pro. What's crazy is that when the Mavic 2 Pro first came out, it was retailing for about $1,300 to $1,400 for whatever kind of kit you're going for. I'm now seeing it on Amazon for two grand because people still rely on that drone for professional work. All of this to say is that I'm, I'm pretty worried about the direction of DJI in terms of their compatibility with third-party software. Third-party software is what drives the professional market in terms of capturing data with the drone. At the end of the day, a drone is just a vehicle that allows you to use whether a sensor that's built onto it or a sensor that you can put onto the drone to go and capture data. In the case of the DJI drones, they all mostly have a nice camera, such as this M300 behind me that I have the P1 camera on, which be sure to subscribe so that you can see the video about this drone and camera combo. It's <laughs> pretty mind-blowing. But outside of that, you need the drone to be able to communicate and talk with other pieces of software so that it can maximize its 
capabilities of what the drone can do. And to go back onto that rant of me spending five grand for the Mavic 3, I knew what I was getting into, but still, there's not an SDK that's available for it, which means that I can't use my Mavic 3 with Pix4D, Drone Deploy, and some of the other applications out there to do automated flight missions with it. If I was able to do that with the Mavic 3, I would much rather use the Mavic 3 than my Inspire 2 to go and capture properties. One, because I can get about a 40 minute battery life with the Mavic 3 compared to about my 20 to 22 minutes with the Inspire 2. Same thing with the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro. I just have a whole lot more capability with the newer drone, but because of DJI handicapping that drone and not allowing me to use it with third-party applications, I still have to use the older tech. And what really sucks most about all of this is the DJI GO 4 app, when it first came out, was had its kinks, but over time it got really, really good and allowed for a lot of customizability within the application to allow your drone to do whatever you want it to do, all the way down to fine-tuning sensitivity of you know, your sticks and throttles and everything on the drone. I'm stuck with the DJI Fly app with the Mavic 3 and the Mavic Mini, and there's really not much you can do. It's really a watered down version of the DJI Go 4 app with a lot of limitations in terms of what you're really able to do with that app. There's a lot of features that I miss from the DJI Go 4 app that I wish were in the DJI Fly app, but DJI still refuses to put it on there. Now, I'm not sure if they're working on getting some of those features to get put onto the DJI Fly app, but I mean, as far as the actual capability and usability of the DJI Fly app, they created that app for the DJI Mini drones and I'm using it on a $5,000 drone. Granted, the Mini 3 is $750. You can get the Fly More bundle and all this other stuff and spend over a grand on that drone, but to spend over $1,000 on a drone and not have the ability or even capability to test out third-party software is to figure out if this is really a route you wanna go down, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on a real drone. And I don't wanna call the Mini 3 not a real drone because it is a drone, it's, it's a great drone, but it's handicapped in a big way because it doesn't have that SDK. One of the biggest reasons why I try and steer people clear of using a cheap drone such as the Mini 2, and by proxy the Mini 3 is gonna fall into that category, as using it as a professional drone is, well, outside of it not having an SDK, there's several other things <laughs> considered within that drone that you shouldn't really use it for professional work. I mean, think about it. If you're a client and you're gonna go and pay somebody two, three, four thousand dollars to go map out a property or do some kind of custom function with the drone to capture data and you show up with the Mini 3, well, one, you're gonna look like a fool and they're gonna really question if what they're paying for is what they're actually gonna get. And now that's not to say that you can't use the drone to do the work. There's still a lot of limitations with that in terms of the accuracy and the data quality and so many other things that I could make this a 30 minute video if I really wanted to get into it, why this is not the drone to use and why I still recommend people to go out and buy the Phantom 4 Pro, the Mavic 2 Pro, the Inspire to do real world work is it, those drones just allow you to do a whole lot more and allow you to correct the data in it and allow you to produce real models for people that are paying for these models. Now, you know, if you do want to get into the world of photogrammetry or at least learn about it, you can get the Mini 2 or, you know, if you have a Phantom 4 Pro or a Mavic 2 Pro lying around, those are great tools and options to just learn about it and to get into the professional commercial world of being a commercial pilot. And for those of you that want to learn more about photogrammetry, I do have a course that I am working on that I hope to release in the near future. It takes the three plus years that I've been doing this professionally, it condenses it into an easy to go through course. It teaches you literally everything and also how to avoid the mistakes that I have made in the past so that you can really learn how to do photogrammetry. So please be sure to follow me and check that out if that's something that you're interested in. In summary, aside from my rants, if you plan on using the DJI Mini 3 with third-party software, I wouldn't hold your breath on it because there's still no confirmed date of when the SDK is gonna come out. So I would really just recommend looking at getting a drone that is supported by these third-party softwares, which you can go on these third-party softwares websites and see the compatible drones, but if you are just the casual photographer or videographer that wants to get a lightweight drone, by all means, please get this drone. It looks like it's gonna be a fantastic drone. I can't wait to get my hands on it and do a full review of it as a videographer myself. But outside of that, there's really no telling of when this drone will be able to be used with third-party software. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. 
If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please be sure to drop it down below. I'd love to have a conversation with you. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, such as the one that I'm posting next week of how to get clients, really how to pitch yourself as a commercial pilot, please be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you can see when that video goes live. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.